Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Essential Worship. But guess what? It's not Tech Tuesday. It's a Friday because I couldn't wait until Tuesday. I found out today they announced the new Behringer Wing Firmware 2.1, and it has finally brought us DCA Spill! Hey, 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 what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. Tech yeah, I'm so excited. We finally have DCA spill for the wing. Uh, I'm going to try to make this video as quick as I can to hit the DCA spill, a couple ways you could use it effectively, and a couple other interesting things from firmware 2.1. Uh, so let's hop right into it. We're going to go to our setup menu uh, in the Surface tab. They're kind of rearranged this a little bit. The third column here at the bottom, DCA spill, you're gonna to wanna to turn that thing on. What DCA spill does, right now we have our left-hand bank is our input channels, our center bank, I have my first eight DCAs shown on here, um, my groups. If I want to get around really quickly, um, rather than creating a bunch of custom pages or searching through you know, banks to find something, if it's in a DCA, I can hit select. So like if I hit select for my electric guitar DCA, it's going to spill out onto my left-hand bank of faders to show the channels that are affected by that DCA. So they're right there in the prime mixing position. And then when I'm done with that, I can click on something else or I can click out of it. And it's just very, very functional for getting around quickly. It's a great, great feature. So one other note I want to hit real quick uh, while we're talking about DCA spill. Um, if you were spilled out on something that has more than 12 channels, so I'm gonna click on the band. I have, I think, 22 channels in this band DCA right now. I'm seeing 12 of them right now. Uh, at the bottom left-hand corner, I have buttons that will take me up and down in four channel increments. So if I want to get to see the rest of the channels on this page, I had to hit that button three times. Um, so one thing that's cool too, this is not a new feature, it's a feature I've never had a use for until now. Again, setup, surface, faders, um, and the third column here in the very middle, we're gonna click on full fader paging. Well, this means that instead of moving in increments of four, on this bank, I'm gonna move in increments of 12. Now, instead of hitting the button three times to get from one bank of 12 to the other, I only have to hit it once and then get around a lot quicker. So that's totally up to you. That um, full fader paging button is not just for DCA spill. That is for any time you use those buttons on any bank. So it's up to you, but for me, I think I'm gonna start using that from now on. All right, so another interesting feature, this is not part of the release notes from the wing, but by having DCA spill, you can also do what we call pop groups. Pop groups are basically a collection of faders that you might just need to throw up for a moment when you're working on a specific thing. So I'll give you an example. Um, I'm gonna make a pop group for this example of channels that the band needs for their in-ears that I need to be able to check from time to time, but they aren't anything I'm using at front of house. So like the click track, the room mics, those kinds of things. Um, so let me show you how to do that. So in this section here, we're gonna go to our DCAs. Um, I'm currently only using DCAs one through eight, but one cool thing about the wing is it actually has 16 DCAs. Um, I'm not using any of the ones nine through 16 because I just don't have a need for them, but I can use those as pop groups. So here's what we need to do. We need to set the faders for these DCAs to Unity and make sure that they're not muted. Otherwise they're gonna have a negative impact on the channels that are being uh, mixed by them. Um, so we can either move them manually or I'll show you a cool trick real quick here. We're gonna set up some custom buttons over here. Um, so we're gonna hit view on our custom control page. I've got eight buttons that aren't currently being used. I'm gonna use this bottom right one function. I'm gonna go to other, scroll almost all the way to the bottom and select fader zero dB. Now, when I hold that button down and press select, the selected channel will jump up to exactly 0, 0.0, which can be pretty handy, just like there, it saves us a bunch of time. All right, so we have the faders of the Unity, we have them uh, not muted. Uh, we're going to select what channels are going into, I'm gonna use DCA 16 for this first pop group. Uh, very easy, I'm gonna hold down the select button, and uh, while it's being held down, I can still utilize my different banks over here. I'm gonna select channels, so, uh, 
the click track, the Q track, uh, room mics, MD, and you see those are all flashing at me. And then my front of house talk back. Now all those channels are being affected by DCA 16. If I spill that, they'll come out and I can just get to them really quickly, do what I need to do and then get out of it. Now, I wanna be able to get to those at any time without having to be on this page. So we're gonna put everything back at user one. Again, in our custom buttons here, we're gonna make button one. The function will be channel spill, or sorry, fader spill. You can pick which area, left, center, or right. We're gonna keep it on the left. And then for our target, we're gonna target DCA 16. So now, even though I don't see that DCA on the screen anywhere, if I hit that button, there's my pop group, there are my channels, I can do what I need to do, and then I can exit out or I can go to something else. Um, very, very easy. Uh, it gives you a lot of flexibility for things that you might just need for a moment and you don't wanna uh, waste a custom page on it, that will work for you instead. Cool, so while we are looking at the different target options for these buttons, um, different things that DCA spill can do, or it really fader spills, what they should call it. Um, next you'll see you have effects, uh, effect racks one through 16. Now, most of this is useless. If I go to the blue plate, I've got all the different settings for my reverb on here, but I don't really want a fader for those. I don't really see how that's gonna be useful, but where this is useful, if you scroll down here, uh, I currently have on effect 16, I have my graphic EQ. Now I don't normally use a graphic EQ, but if you're doing um, monitor mixing for actual stage monitors, this is probably something you wanna use. Um, and if you've done that before, I did not realize on the wing, cause I hardly ever use a graphic EQ, they didn't have a button to throw those faders on your physical faders. Well now you can, because I just assigned that to this button. When I click on here, I have physical faders and I can move that stuff up and down. Because I have the full fader paging on there, I can go in groups of 12 and move those things around. It shows me on the screen how much they're up or down uh, and what frequency they're on. If I hit the mute button, it will reset them back to Unity level. Um, so this is cool. I will say uh, I did not, again, realize that this is not a thing until today. Uh, I do uh, I think it's unfortunate that it took Behringer this long to create this, considering most uh, digital mixers have this feature right away. Um, so while I'm glad that you can do it now with a button, Behringer, if you're listening to this, please, please make things easier and put a button on the screen that says, GEQ to faders or something like that. Um, because I can see a lot of ways this could go wrong where maybe I think I'm uh, working on wedge one, but because of the way I set up the button and it's not necessarily correlating with what I have on the screen, it's just whatever that button is assigned to, I can see how you could accidentally be working on wedge two, thinking you're on wedge one or whatever, and then now you're possibly gonna have some feedback issues or at the very least tone issues. Um, there should be a button on the screen for the selected um, effect or as part of the targets on here, there should be one that says, um, selected effect or effect on screen or something to that degree. So hopefully there'll be a 2.2, not long from now that would make that a little bit better, but it's a good start and I'm sure it could be useful for people that need to do this um, until they can do better on that. <laughs> okay, so looking back on the target some more, we did DCAs, we did effects. You also have buses. This is kind of cool. Um, I can see a few ways where some people can use this. I don't think it's something that everybody's gonna need to use. Um, I'm gonna pick a bus that doesn't have a lot going on with it, like this dub of bus here. So what I mean by not a lot on it, I only have like two things turned on in that mix. So when I hit the button for it, it's basically giving me sends on fader for that mix, but only showing me the channels that are physically turned on in that mix. Um, so that could be useful for things like vocal effects, um, uh, but that's, to me, that's kind of it. Uh, now one problem for me personally, and again, this could be easily fixed with a firmware update, 
I actually don't use my vocal effects on buses 1 through 16. I use main mixes 2, 3, and 4. I've got another video that shows why I do that. It frees me up more buses for in-ears and that kind of thing. Um, but unfortunately, right now, and this is probably an easy fix, it only targets buses 1 through 16, not main mixes, not matrices. So there you go. Um, that'd be nice if that could be added in the future. Um, but as of right now, some people could use that. For me, it's not really useful. Uh, moving on, you also have uh, your auto mix units in here. Uh, I don't really see the need for this, and I will tell you if you do see the need for it, well, too bad, because there's a glitch in here. It doesn't work right. Um, this is not the channels that are associated with my Automix X. Um, instead, this appears to be channels one through six, because I do have six channels in that group right now, but these are not the right ones. It seems to be showing the wrong ones. So there's a glitch there um, for both X and Y, Behringer. Uh, either get rid of it or fix it, um, but I don't really see the, the need for it, if I'm being honest. Okay, so moving on, um, another thing, uh, uh, not, uh, not a negative, but something I got excited about when I read the release notes and the it's not what I thought it was. <laughs> uh, they say in the release notes that they've added gain reduction for compressors and gates. Um, and I thought they were saying that they were doing that on the metering page, but you can see the metering page looks like it as always looks like. What they meant to say, or what they did say, but I misread it, was when you hit view and then faders, it's on here. I have almost no use for this page. I didn't even know this page was here. I don't care that there's gain reduction on here anymore because I, I just don't see the point. Like This isn't that different from the regular view button page. It just shows a fader on the screen. I don't know why I need that. I've got faders here. Um, so I don't care that that's there. I will say Behringer, again, on a later update, it'd be great if you did add, like on the X-Ray 2 in the meters page. I'd love it if there's another tab. Instead of showing me all the inputs and all the buses, uh, I would love a tab that just shows me the inputs and then down here shows me gain reduction. That'd be more useful in case um, something was compressing like crazy. I didn't have to have it on the screen or a bank of it on the screen, I could see, you know, oh, something's compressing like crazy um, from this one screen. That would be more useful in my opinion. Um, so there's that. Finally, let's end on another positive, uh, again, setup surface. In the middle, the general section over here, um, towards the middle here, it says show fader value on scribble. We're gonna turn that on for a moment here. Um, this is pretty handy uh, for some people. Um, so as you move a fader up and down, you can see on the scribble strip, the uh, name of it kind of goes away and becomes smaller, and then it shows you the actual fader level. Um, this is kind of cool if you are, um, let's say you're taking notes and you've got three videos and they need to be at negative five for this video and negative 10 for this video and negative 12 for this video, and you wanna be exactly precise on it. You could move this and see the exact level on the scribble strip. And you might be thinking, well, why do I need that? Well, like right now I'm sitting down, I'm aiming for negative 10, but the angle that I'm sitting at, um, because I'm sitting, it doesn't look like negative 10, it looks like it's more like negative seven or eight. Or if years later, maybe your faders start to get out of calibration, this is gonna tell you exactly the level you're hitting on the screen. Uh, so that may or may not be something that interests you. I will say this, uh, I have seen that same feature on a lot of way, way more expensive consoles, and the Behringer Wing has done the best job of it. A lot of those other consoles, when you move multiple things at a time, you know, you get all the, the numbers going, but they completely get rid of the text of what channel you're on. So like if I moved a bunch of things at once and then said, oh, I need to turn vocal one up, I wouldn't know until I let go and wait a second to figure out which one was vocal one if I kind of lost track. Well, I love how on the wing, as I move them around, you don't completely lose the text. It just goes smaller um, and goes at the bottom until you're done and then it comes back to the full screen. That is so smart and so handy. Um, I don't know why <laughs> no one else has thought of that before, at least that I'm aware of. Um, so if you like that feature, that's, uh, that's really well done on the wing. So there you go. Um, those are some of the new things that are on here. Uh, again, my favorites, uh, setup, surface, 
I would definitely turn on DCA spill. I would probably keep on full fader paging. Uh, if you're into seeing your fader level on the screen and text uh, in the center, turn on show fader value on scribble. Uh, and I think those are all very handy features. So I hope that was helpful for someone out there. If you have any question, leave your comments down in the comment section below. And until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.